I'd like to introduce you to our keynote speaker this afternoon. Dr. Shetty, Devi Shetty is a renowned cardiac surgeon and his team has pioneered neonatal cardiac surgery. He has founded a chain of super specialty hospitals, which includes the Rabindranath Tagore International Institute of Cardiac Sciences in Kolkata and the Narayana Hridayalaya Health City in Bangalore. He is also a professor at the Rajiv Gandhi University of Medical Sciences, Bangalore and University of Minnesota Medical School, US. The group has 26 hospitals in 17 cities across India and a health city in Cayman Islands. He, along with his team, have pioneered the concept of a health city, a 2,000 to 5,000 bed conglomeration of multiple super specialty hospitals in a single campus. The economies of scale achieved through the health cities have enabled the group to provide affordable health care to thousands. He was also involved in coining the term micro health insurance and spearheaded the launch of Yashaswini, a health insurance for the farmers of Karnataka in association with the state government, which has revolutionized health insurance in the state. The Narayana Hridayalaya group manages the world's largest telemedicine program and has treated over 53,000 heart patients. He was the recipient of the Padma Shri in 2003, as well as the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year in 2003, and the Dr. B.C. Roy Award in 2004, as well as the Social Entrepreneur World Economic Forum in 2005. He has also received the Padma Bhushan in 2011. It is my privilege to introduce to you our keynote speaker, Dr. Devi Shetty. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I just would, I would like to uh, talk to you about our desire to uh, perform heart surgery for $800. Today, we are uh, able to offer heart surgery for about $1,400 to $1,600. Uh, why we need healthcare is primarily because healthcare is not about delivering healthcare alone. It is going to be the driver of economy of 21st century. Global healthcare and wellness industry is a $4.5 trillion industry. It's the second largest industry in the world. And the advantage of this industry is uh, this industry can create millions <coughs> of jobs for women who are semi-skilled or unskilled. We are a country which requires 2 million heart surgeries a year. But all the heart hospitals in the country put together perform less than 120,000 heart surgeries. So around 11 years ago, we launched a health insurance with a premium of 11 cents per month, that is 5 rupees per month. In 11 years, over 444,000 farmers had varieties of surgeries, 66,000 farmers had heart operation. All this happened by sheer 5 rupees per month. Now we are trying to convince our government that we have 850 million mobile phone subscribers who are spending 150 rupees per month just to speak on the mobile phone. If we can have a health insurance by charging them 20 rupees per mobile phone subscriber, we will be able to offer health care to 850 million mobile phone subscribers of India. Now when this dramatic revolution happens, we need to change the way the hospitals are built. So in Bangalore, we built a health city, what you can see here in, on this slide. We have 3,000 beds. Our intention is to have 5,000 beds and have 10 to 12,000 outpatients per day. The first building is a heart hospital, which has the infrastructure to perform 60 major heart surgeries in a day. We have 100 towns in India with a population of half a million to one million where they have no super specialty heart hospital. They can't afford So we work with LNT with the concept of creating a 300 bed super specialty hospital. 
to build it and equip for six million dollars and build it in six months. Normally it costs about 25 million dollars for a hospital of this size. And LNT built the hospital in a place called Mysore. And in this hospital, we have done over 200 heart surgeries. Our intention is to reproduce this model in other parts of the country. In this hospital, after the heart surgery, when the patient is in the ward, he is taken care by the spouse with the curriculum we developed with the, universe, with the Stanford University using audio visuals. So the spouse is trained to look after the patient so that when the patient goes home, there will be continuity of the care and the readmission rate will come down. We are very conscious about the quality and the price. We are a hospital which is accredited by Joint Commission of US. How do you control the cost? We invest heavily on technology. We got, we have Oracle ERP on a cloud. We have 26 hospitals across the country. Around 12 o'clock in the afternoon, senior doctors, senior administrators get a SMS on their mobile phone with the previous day's revenue, expenses, and EBITDA margin. For us, looking at the profit and loss account at the end of the month is like reading a post-mortem report. Whereas looking at the profit and loss account on a daily basis is a diagnostic tool. So we can take remedial measures. We do all this because we believe that charity is not scalable, but good business principles are scalable. Around five years ago, we launched a scholarship program our in West Bengal. We want 2,000 children from villages of West Bengal to join medical school every year. And we give them a scholarship. When the children are 13 years old, they should commit to us, they, they, they will become doctors. Then we give them a scholarship of $5 to $10 a month, and we mentor them. We want children from poor families to become doctors because outstanding doctors across the world who change the way the healthcare is delivered generally come from deprived background because these are the children with the fire in the belly who will work for 18, 20 hours a day and change the rules of the game. Now our effort is making hospitals safer for the patient. This is the cover page of a a magazine which was published in US in 1966, nearly 50 years ago. And the lead article is, our hospitals are killing us. And 2008, it is still the same problem. Forbes had the cover page explaining that one in 200 patients, if he spends one night in the American hospital, they die due to medical error. It's not medical negligence, medical error. Getting admitted to an American hospital is 10 times riskier than skydiving. So we started working on technology. We, have now, we are now developing iPads with the software which will prevent medical error. All the papers what you see at the background will be replaced by the iPad. Every doctor will have an iPad in hand, every patient will have an iPad, and this is the way the healthcare will be delivered. And the advantage of this system is that this is the hospital we built in Cayman Island, which is just getting commissioned. When a patient is recovering from the cardiac surgery in the ICU at 12 o'clock at night in Cayman Island, it is 11 o'clock during the daytime in Bangalore, so our nurses can monitor the patient in Cayman Island because our uh, software is on the cloud and you can have real-time information. We are also working in developing simulators to train critical care nurses. And this is the team which uh, from 
Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, which was predominantly uh, uh, helping and anesthetizing a patient who was going in for a liver transplant in Bangalore. The surgical team in Bangalore doing liver transplant on a child and anesthesia team in uh, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia anesthetized a patient from US through the satellite. Uh, these are the last slide. We are a case study at the Harvard Business School and we were uh, uh, on the cover page of Wall Street Journal. Uh, I'm very happy to uh, uh, thank you very much for your patient uh, listening and I'm very happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Shetty, for taking the time to talk to us this afternoon. And I think we have time for uh, just two questions from the audience. So does anyone have a question for Dr. Shetty? There's a gentleman just by the camera in the middle. So thanks a lot for your presentation. Uh, my question raises from a point that prevention is better than cure. So that's wonderful work you're doing, uh, setting up a wonderful infrastructure to tackle the heart patients we will have in maybe 10 years from now or so. What about seeing what are the ways to avoid these operations, cardiac operations happening. For example, you said 20 rupees we collect from every mobile holder and then we see we do the operations in international level standards. What about collecting 50 and then letting them know what should you do so that these problems don't arise? So what's your the, opinion on that? Yeah, across the world, uh, preventive treatment uh, the, the always piggybacks on the curative treatment. Right now, we do not have an infrastructure to take care of the uh, needs of the patients. Once this infrastructure comes up, they will be the centers which will keep educating the patients about prevention. Uh, doing the prevention alone without the infrastructure to cure becomes very expensive you have no vehicle to deliver. For prevention to happen, you need a hospital, you need doctors who are the people who cure, but at the same time, they do talk about the prevention. And we have invested heavily in prevention part of it as well. But ultimately, it should be the government which should come up with the right kind of policies and investment in educating people about prevention. Thank you. Fantastic. And I think the gentleman in the white shirt is up at the front here for one last quick question. Good afternoon, sir. I am Dr. Vivekanand Singh. I am from Imphal. That's uh, the capital town of Manipur. Uh, you have already entered till Assam. Like, uh, my question is like, uh, the North is logistically, infrastructurally, and population wise, uh, there are least chance of scaling up any business that, uh, or any healthcare facilities that we do. So, for such a reason, like, uh, how do uh, your uh, STEM company, like, look up uh, for, to solve the healthcare problems in my area? See, the, uh, we have been involved with a lot of policy-making bodies in improving the healthcare in northeastern region. The most important requirement for all the northeastern hill state is to have a medical school attached to every district headquarters hospitals of your state. Uh, it is very, very important that you produce adequate number of doctors, nurses and medical technicians in your own state. You are perhaps not aware that 70% of the medical colleges of the country are in southern India and 70% of the population live in North and Eastern India. So the only way you can bridge the gap is by having adequate number of medical and nursing schools in your own town, mainly because the, your own students, when they come to Bangalore and study in one of our medical schools, after graduation, most of them do not want to go back to those areas. Whereas if you create a medical school in your own area, even if 10% of the students want to stay back in your own state, that is more than sufficient for you to take care of your needs. Healthcare is a regional affair. 
no matter what I do in Bangalore, I can't really touch the people in Manipur. So you want to have a better health care, you have to convince your policy makers, your politicians to build more medical college. And you don't need all these 20 acres of land with the uh, thousands of teachers to start a medical college. This is essentially a hype created by our own colleagues to raise the value of our uh, uh, profession. We are like any other profession. There is nothing, there is no halo around our head. So if the society starts demanding, things will change. But if you, all of you keep quiet, things will not change. Yes, I hope uh, the impact investors present out here are also listening to the opportunity that exists there. Yeah, thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much again, Dr. Shetty, for giving us your time this afternoon. It's really appreciated. Thank you. Thank you.